Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor to have the opportunity to address to you all. Let me first introduce myself. I am Nabila Poulou, a student of Master of Artificial Intelligence and Robotics from Université de Mascarani in Mauritius. Together with my colleague Wafi Kamir and supervisor Rajiv Kudiran, we did our research on the topic Monitoring Coral Reefs Death Causes with Artificial Intelligence, which I am going to present to you. The theme focuses on addressing the issues of coral death causes with AI techniques, such as machine learning and deep learning. The presentation will cover an introduction, the problem area. Next, I will talk about the objectives of this study, then the methodology and results which focus on the two techniques of AI. Finally, I will end with a conclusion and recommendation. Let us start with an introduction by, by outlining the importance of corals. Coral reefs are one of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet and are vital in providing nursery, refuge, spawning, and nurturing areas for a multitude of different organisms. They protect coastal areas and communities from natural threats like tsunamis, cyclones, and even shocks. Healthy reefs ecosystem also provides additional economic benefits by supporting commercial activities and tourism, which actually contributes to 23.9% GDP in Mauritius. Conversely, coral reefs are facing a range of serious natural, natural and anthropogenic threats that significantly alter their ecological composition, and thereafter reduce their capacity to deliver essential ecosystem services. This largely includes global warming, industrial pollution, and overfishing. It was actually observed that more than 55% of corals around the lagoons of Mauritius were either partially or completely bleached. Another cause of coral mortality is the outbreak of crown of thorn starfish, which can eat up to 90% of live coral tissue on a particular reef. Furthermore, the main issues relating to collection of data via underwater survey remain very alarming, whether it is the safety aspect or the technique itself, which is time-consuming and labor-intensive for marine scientists. The objective of this paper is divided into two categories of artificial intelligence, namely machine learning and deep learning. So the purpose is to assist marine scientists in monitoring automatically the causes of deterioration in coral reefs. So the aim of machine learning is to predict if a region has the possibility of bleaching. For this part, we investigated several machine learning classifiers to predict if a given region has the possibility of bleaching given its current condition. We also adjust the hyperparameters of the classifiers using different optimization techniques which we are going to look during the study. So here we have to find the best model for the machine learning classifier. Until the next objective, the purpose of deep learning is to detect crown of thorns from underwater images. So for this, we train a deep learning model with a custom data set of images of crown of thorns. Let us now discuss the approach employed for machine learning. First of all, the, for the findings, we discovered that drastic changes in temperature can be disastrous to the survival of coral reefs, causing mass coral bleaching even and infectious disease outbreaks. Second point, nation, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration states that temperature are actually stressed by changes in condition, such as temperature, which may vary depending on the depth of water at which the corals reside. We have also learned that different species of corals live in different ocean basins. So these findings explored during the study has thus helped us to, to understand and find the necessary data to predict bleaching region. The data used was from Harvard Dataverse with the 880 records. The dependent variable are shown in table 1. The dependent variable is bleaching severity. It consists of five clauses indicating the scale of bleaching in a particular region. Let us now move on, the, move on to the application of machine learning. So here we have to train the machine learning model with both bleaching events to, to be able to make further prediction. In the first stage, 
We train the machine learning models, six classification model of supervised learning, namely knife based, decision tree, KNN, SVM, random forest, and XGBoost were used. These are trained with the data and their data and their accuracy are, cu are evaluated. In second stage, we apply SMUT, which stands for Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. To the dataset, it was actually observed that the clauses of the dependent variable were imbalanced. Therefore, SMUT being a data augmentation technique is used to increase the minority clause. The machine learning models are then re-evaluated again. And the third and final step, hyperparameter tuning using optimization algorithm is then introduced with the SMUT dataset as manual computation for different hyperparameters is time-consuming and take up resources. So the method of optimization used are grid search and two metaheuristic optimization, namely particle swarm optimization and genetic algorithm. Now the machine learning to which these optimization techniques are applied are random forest, SVM and KNM because these are chosen because of their different hyperparameter configuration. Finally, again, the models are re evaluated and their accuracy with the accuracy obtained. Because not to forget, the objective is to find the best model of machine learning. Let us now elaborate the application of deep learning. Here, we have to localize and classify the crown of thorns in a given image. If Shandet, which is a TensorFlow's object detection API, is used, it is a scale confident model developed by Google Brain Team and is a state of the art model. I have put together a diagram in Figure 2 to better illustrate the step for this part. So, for this procedure, we started with 134 Im different images of Crown of Thorns collected from the internet with different quantity present, color, size, and position of crown of thorns. These images were then annotated using labeled im. It is used to draw and label the crown of thorns bounding boxes. These data are then split into three sets, namely train set, test set, and valid set. The augmentation is then used to increase the number of images of crown of thorns in the training data set. The technique used are flip, rotation, and grayscale, among others. Consequently, the number of images used to train the efficient D0 model is increased to 332 images of crown of thorns. TensorFlow records, known as TF records, and label map are then generated for the free sets. These are used to build the crown of thorns detection model. A pre-trained model for efficient D0 is then used to train the with the custom and augmented data set. Finally, we then used model ways to make test interference on images from the test set and evaluate the results produced. So in this slide, we demonstrate the result obtained from the, through the chart in figure three and the table in table two. So in figure three, initially without the smut, XJBoos and random forest had almost the same result and were the most accurate. This is because they use the same model representation. The least accurate result was obtained from naive based with 58.2% without ISMUD. Now with ISMUD, HGBoost is still had the best performance and was the most accurate with 80.11%. 80 Decision tree also had a better performance. On the other hand, it was observed that a, de a decrease in accuracy for naive based KNN and random forest. Now concerning hyperparameter tuning using optimization, see in table 2. For random forest, particle swarm optimization produces a better result in 15 seconds, with an accuracy of 77.8%. Genetic algorithm yielded approximately the same result in 20 seconds, whereas research actually took the longest time. 389 seconds with lower accuracy of 76.1%. Therefore, Random forest coupled with particle swarm optimization produced a better result. For SVM, surprisingly, no result could be concluded, since even after three hours, the program was still executing and then freezed. Finally, for KNN, the free optimization algorithm produced the same result of 67.6%, but with different time, as shown in the table. 
Therefore, it can be concluded that genetic algorithm was the best performance in less time with 0.13 per seconds. We now jump to the result of deep learning. Three hours were required to train the custom TensorFlow 2 detector and GPU for 10,000 steps. 14 images were tested. Even the crown of thorns may seem to have the same structural appearance and color like the colors present. The model was able to make the recognition, such as shown in figure 4a and 4b. Figure 4c had, has multiple crown of thorns present in the image, but the train efficient dead zero was able to make some of the detection, but actually missed one. So we actually got a result of 81% of correct detection for the deep learning part. Now, uh, to conclude this study, let me briefly summarize the main issue first. Well, in Mauritius, qualitative and quantitative surveys are carried out by marine scientists to investigate the coral reef ecosystem. The actual methods increase the risk of repetition of work, is time-consuming, take up resources, and is highly intensive. This study therefore introduces an, in an innovative and false approach of reef monitoring based on artificial intelligence. Six classifiers of machine learning were used to automatically classify corals into bleaching and non-bleaching categories like by training and both bleaching events. The experiment was further reinforced using a smart and optimization algorithm. So these contributed to improve accuracy of the machine learning classifiers and were less time consuming. It was found that XJBoost produced a higher accuracy of 80.11% and I was the best was the least performant with 53.41% accuracy. It was also found that random forest performed better with particle swarm optimization and KNN achieved a higher accuracy with genetic algorithm. Additionally, deep learning was used for the detection of ground of thorns in the underwater images. A custom data set of 332 images of ground of thorns were used to train the efficient dead D0. The latter took three hours to train and yielded 81% of correct detection. So as future work, the same model, model structures for AI may be applied to a larger data set in identifying bleaching region and for detection of ground of tones, but the processing power has to be catered for because the actual problem faced during the study was the implementation of deep learning model, which took time to process but deploying the model on Google Colab with GPU helped to infer good results. We also need a dataset of bleaching region to be up to date. In view of the result observed, the use of AI in coral monitoring shows promising potential in the oceanographic field. As discussed previously in the first slide, coral reefs provide countless benefits to human and wildlife. So the pro work produced may hence be used in oceanography research institute by the government and NGOs to safeguard reef ecosystem. Well, this brings me to the end of my presentation. We have a, you have a list of references here. Before I finish, let me just add that even if we cannot disturb the threats of global warming right away, which greatly affect the marine biosphere, we can still contribute to the coral survival, which is crucial for the underwater ecosystem. Thank you all for your attention and time. I hope you have gained an insight on the use of machine learning and deep learning in monitoring the reef ecosystem. If you have any questions, I'll be pleased to answer them.